You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. This is a very special episode. We were absolutely shocked to hear that Chance Perdomo passed away a few weeks ago. And uh, it hit me like, it, it, it was hard to believe that this happened. He was a, a young man, talented man, and such a great guy. And we had such a conversation, great conversation. And we were texting afterwards. And when you hear about these things, Ryan, it's, you know, it just it felt extra painful being that we connected and we talked about a lot of things in life. And it just, it's so unexpected. And, you know, I thought about not airing this episode. And then it occurred to me, that it was such a beautiful conversation and it was chances, as he said, his first um, podcast. And, uh, you know, I, I felt like I wanted people to hear what a great guy he was and how sweet and charming and how sad it really is to see him go. And um, that's why I decided to air this podcast and, um, you know, to honor him, to honor Chance. And um, it's tragic. I've never had to do this before. I I, I didn't know how to do this. Um, I just, I just couldn't believe it, Ryan. It's, it's just, and I think you were the one who texted me. Yeah. Uh, it, Cause yeah, it, um, I saw it um, just posted online and um, you just like, the, like I, I had to like I made sure to check like a bunch of just places just like because to make sure they, they, there's there's no way like just there's no way he was just he, he was here full of life he was sitting right here sitting right here and not like I mean also just he's the youngest uh, person I think we've had one of the youngest talked to and it's just because that that that's one of those things that just doesn't factor into your just like outlook yeah. on life I mean we've. <laughs> Well, we, we, yeah, we talk about mental health on this, uh, and mental health includes dealing with loss and other things. And, and that's one of the reasons also why I wanted to air it is just because there's so many people that, you know, deal with tragic things that happen in their lives and, uh, and loss and how you deal with it. And I can't imagine how his family's feeling. And, um, the only thing I could think about was, was celebrating him was celebrating our time that we, our brief time that we had together. I remember walking him outside to his rental car and having some laughs and giving each other a hug. And he was just so friendly. And that energy he had, you know, it just, I just, I just, it, it's unimaginable. And, uh, you know, I pray for him and his family. And I think about him every day, every day, since I heard the news and, um, you know, I called his publicists, uh, I, me I messaged them and, you know, I was, oh, I wasn't going to air it if, if they had an issue with it or anything. I, it just, but, um, you know, I wanted people to hear, hear him open up and talk about, you know, his life, but, uh, yeah. Rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace, Chance Perdomo. And uh, all my love to your family and your friends. And uh, let's let's play the tape. Let's get inside of Chance Perdomo. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. This is the first time I've had a guest who, who first of all, you, you, slept, you, you never do this, but you slept through your alarm clock. I did. I did. I, 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 I have to give you shit about that. No, please. You need to. I've been uh, on the uh, training for Gen V season two. It's been kicking my ass, dude. You've been trained. You, so you, how many, how often do you train? I'm training uh, six days a week. Sometimes, sometimes two a day, depending on how I feel. Why do you have to have your shirt off a lot? 
Well, the plan is to come back looking like a superhero because the first season, all shit breaks loose in the college. And so now I'm, uh, you know, the characters are in the real world. So I think it's superhero time. Really? At least that's the plan. I got to meet with the showrunner and see if that aligns with it. But I've been training for months just But don't they put on those suits? Don't, don't they give you like stuff to make you look big? We don't have suits yet. I know, I know some of the guys from the, the boys proper, they were talking about, you know, they were training before and then they were like, hey, you know, you can just ask them to pad up the suit, but we don't have that option yet. So you got to just get muscular. I, I have to at least appear muscular. How much have you gained? How many, how much weight? So I was, I've been the heaviest I've ever been. Uh, I'm hovering between uh, like 199 and 205 and it fluctuates like you know that's solid on. thank you thank you yeah so that's which, solid because you're what 510 511 five, we'll go 510 we'll go 510 because i mean yeah because you look solid thank you now is, is it hard do you have to eat a lot more protein do you have to take care of yourself more you have to sleep more for all the exercise you're doing oh yeah a lot of sleep a lot of work uh, a lot of working out a lot of a lot of eating but now we're essentially trying to maintain the size but kind of recomposition right so lower the body fat, but maintain whatever muscle we've built. So I am eating just ridiculous amounts of protein. What do you eat when you wake up? I wake up, I have four to eight eggs. I'll have one of these shakes. I'll then hit the gym, have a protein smoothie, come back, have a steak, maybe half of rotisserie chicken, and then finish it later. <laughs> but you, are you one of those guys that one of those actors, not one of those. Are you one of those guys? I didn't mean like that. I meant like, are you, are you one, one of those of the, dudes? Are you one of those people that have to always be busy, have to be doing something, or you'll go crazy? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think um, when the when the outside world is chaotic, the inside world is calm, and when the in outside world is calm, inside is chaotic. So you know, I quite like being on the road in the circus, you know, out and about the pressure. I feel most at home between action and cut, right? So it just kind of depends. But uh, I take after my mother. My mother is a very much a kind of, kind of, kind of person. Get up, go. Yeah. Uh, so she's a very nurturing, lovely Latina lady. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you're not on your shit, it's, you know, it's get the fuck up. Don't be a pussy. Let's go. And I'm like, can I get a hug, mom? She's like, yeah, then fucking go. So sit my whole life. So, so I. Uh, she raised you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she raised me. Um, uh, the man that raised me as well, um, my dad, Lars, in uh, in England. Um, but yeah, my mom's. Is he your biological father? No, no. So I only started to get to know my biological father, you know, properly in later years, and I was a little apprehensive because sure. it was like I still had the chip on my shoulder. And the chip was what was fueling me a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to become an actor and I'm going to make the world love me. Why? Because did you love me? You know, and then, and then, you know, we start communicating after, you know, the show start picking up and the recognition mm -hmm. happens. So I was suspicious, but then I went, it was like 2018. I went and uh, it was in the middle of nowhere, Glendora. Uh, well, I don't want to say middle of nowhere if you live in Glendora, but to me coming, <laughs> coming out, it was the middle of nowhere. And, uh, and a dear friend of mine at the time, Gavin, shout out, thank you. Drove us like three hours out to, to, go, to go see him. Um, knocked on his door. And then the moment we opened the door, we both just started crying. You and weren't was, expecting that. No, I wasn't. You know, I, I cried as a boy, as a man, and, a, and everything in between. And I didn't go for me. I went for him. But I think ironically, because of that, I got quite a bit out of that by just listening and hearing. And as I get older, I understand things. I'm okay, I, I get the situation. Mom's side, biological father's side, and then the truth. Okay, I can kind of see what's going on. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and then after that, I didn't know how to do anything. Cause I was like, where's my fuel gone? I couldn't do my lines. I couldn't work out. I couldn't like- Really? The yeah. Like it, there was so much of that fuel was was kind of, I think rooted somewhere in that kind of chip. Proving yourself and and saying that I'm good enough, thinking that, you know, all these things fighting, you know, it's like- Oh, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, that's gotta be difficult to make that decision to go see your dad, to sort of wanna, I mean, I guess every kid who's like, so he wasn't around when you were growing up. No, but I did, I did have, I did have, uh, you know, my whole life too, 
very awesome father figures. I call, uh, you know, one pops and one dad. Yeah. You know, uh, pops is over in Antioch in uh, here in California, and he uh, he's I, I, I call him colloquially Samurai Pops. This guy, he is the highest ranking um, uh, bato jutsu, so samurai sword art um, uh, black guy there's ever been. The only guy who was higher than him was an actual sa uh, black samurai who was a slave in feudal Japan era. And he now outranks him. And what? He's, and he's, he's like, he's like savant with martial arts. He's got like a black belt and like 12 different martial arts. He's the kind of guy that doesn't get stressed out about anything. No, he does. Well, he does get stressed out when he's on the phone to like if he's got like a refrigerator delivery gone wrong that that's the only time i'll kind of it's nonsense yeah yeah it's nonsense he's is what it very him. stoic regular uh, you know you know regimented in his approach and so i think i get a, I, when i'm at work i get a lot of that from him yeah but uh i can also say that when the tiny nuisances come they get me too yeah i mean when you're crying with your dad that that that's a, that's a that's a visual for sure. Did was it something that he kind of told you the story and and said the things that you wanted to hear and then I'm sorry son did he ever like I think it was more it wasn't for me but it was things that he was just like of course those things were said divulging and it know. was just coming out just coming out years or a couple decades worth of things just to blah 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 and it I just sat and listened man and it was it was beautiful and and now you talk yeah 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 you know I'm, I might go see him um I might go see him I might go do a drive out say what's up um what does your mom three? think about all that my mom she didn't like it at first did she she was okay with it because i was already older by then right but i did grow up with a sense of like you know the, and, and it's understandable right but it's you know and i don't think it's on purpose but there is like an emotional sense of vitriol i would say maybe that's too strong but kind of like no this kid is my kid you know i i i raised him um and and these other two dudes raised him like this is my kid yeah so there was a degree of that but you know it's kind of also like you know you know it's all right um I'm going there for him. I'm going there for me too. I need to know, you know, some of the quirks and things that come from me. I go, oh, I see where it comes from now. I had no idea how hereditary certain behaviors were, how, 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 how certain facial expressions, the way I chew. I'm like, okay, wow, my goodness. There are certain learned behaviors that you get from, you know, everything, but you kind of go, ah, I see where I get all of that from. Right. Yeah, yeah. But he's never like asked you for anything. No, 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 no. See? Which is great. That, okay, Which if is that great. happened, then you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, and that man. was, yeah, 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 yeah. So so that that was, you know. Well, that's that beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. You said beautiful at the same time. Inside of you is brought to you by Nutrafol. Well, it's uh, apropos. It's, uh, you know, it's good that we're talking about Nutrafol because, uh, well, hair, hair thinning impacts a lot of us. In fact, me, uh, over half of us will experience hair thinning at some point in our lives. It's not only common, it's it's normal. And uh, you should join over 1 million people who are doing something about it with Nutrafol. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. Number one, with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Hair thinning is complicated. The problem is it actually could be much bigger than your hair alone. Like your skin, hair is a reflection of your health, and internal factors can impact the way your hair looks, feels, and grows. Nutrafol's whole body approach multi-targets possible underlying root causes like stress, hormone fluctuations, and nutrient gaps for visibly thicker, stronger hair. When it comes to thinning hair, there are many possible root causes at play, and Nutrafol helps address them through a multi-targeted, whole-body approach. Nutrafol helps support hair growth from within by targeting possible key root causes of thinning, stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism through whole-body health. While many supplements rely solely on ingredient studies, Nutrafol clinically tests final formulations to ensure their efficacy. In Nutrafol's own clinical studies, 72% of men saw more more scalp coverage after taking Nutrafol men's hair growth supplement for six months. And 86% of women saw improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women's hair growth supplement for six months. Take their hair wellness quiz at Nutrafol.com for a personalized hair health plan based on your specific possible root causes. With Nutrafol, getting help building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription or doctor's visits required, 
Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. You could see results in three to six months. Take the first step to help you see visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code INSIDE. Find out why over 4,500 professionals and stylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code INSIDE. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code INSIDE. Find out why 4,500 professionals and stylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code INSIDE. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code inside did you always want to act oh my whole life my whole life i uh i'm a firm believer well first and foremost i i'm a firm believer that everyone is who ex exactly who they're supposed to be and you know if you imagine yourself like a, a a pool of coins they're on heads and tails and each coin is an aspect of yourself a personality quirk a, a you know something to about you you could either shame or reprimand yourself over and over again to no avail, or you could figure out the best and most efficient way to turn that tails onto a head. And you flip each coin. And the more coins that you flip, the more you go, oh, I was just utilizing what I have and who I am, you know, in the not the most productive avenue. But if I do it over here, it's fine. If I'm disruptive in class, if I'm the class clown, if I don't like what's going on here, okay, well, they'll, they'll, you know, maybe they medicate you. Maybe, you know, you, you, you don't excel in yourself. Maybe you don't develop and you stay on tails. Or maybe you find acting. Or maybe you go and you decide to, you like to work with your hands and suddenly your life's changed and it's on heads. So I know my, my, my whole life I've wanted to do two things. That's never changed. I was a toddler and uh, I said to my mom, I said, uh, I wanted to be on Barney, which was the, uh, the toddler's way of saying I want to be an actor. I want to be on, I want to be there, mom. I want to be on Barney. This was in North Carolina. So I had to ask him, I want to be on Barney. So I, this was mom, before yeah, England. Yeah, way before. I was like, mom, I want to be on Barney. And then. Um, <laughs> there you and, go. That was and, it. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name's Chance. <laughs> That's how I used to sound when I, and then became Chance and how you Chance. Know, so. yeah. you, you went from Chance to Chance. <laughs> yeah, it just depends. Like the accent comes and goes. But I, uh, I and then that. I wanted to be, and I said, and she was like, how the fuck does a two-year-old know this? I said, I wanted to be the first black president of the United States of America. Um, I got beaten to that, obviously, but um, but my good, whole life- Good aspiration, those are some- And she was like, what, how old are you? And so I had an imaginary friend and I would talk, apparently I'd talk politics with my imaginary friend and it would freak my mouth. And uh, I, I, my whole life have gone those two avenues. I was studying to get my law degree and doing acting at the same time. Um, you know, I figured, you know, it's, if you want to do that later in life, which I do, you know, you have, you know, it takes, you have to be taken seriously and to have a degree that gives you, a, whether you practice or not having a jurisprudential understanding of the world, they'll be like, okay, he kind of knows how society's working. Or you could just be a lawyer in a movie. You don't really need to go be a, come a lawyer. Right. Unless, Unless that's what you want to do. Well, it helps with the contracts a lot. It helps. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah I, you don't need a lawyer, right? I, I, well, I do. I do, but I, I you wouldn't. I, Sure, I'll, I'll 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 have long conversations with my lawyer, and he or sometimes he'll be like, "Actually, no, that's that's right. I was going to explain it to you, but okay, no, you, you understand. Okay, great." Yeah. Um. Uh. But it was actually, I got my first gig, and it was like three lines on this now cancelled television program. It was like a period piece. It's called Hetty Feather. Shout out BBC. Hetty Feather. Yeah, that's right. Hetty Feather. Hetty Feather. So there was like three days of shooting for like these three lines, and they would have coincided with my first year. Uh, law exams. And so I was either going to do these three lines or I was going to do my law exam. So I dropped out of university. Uh, and For know, three lines? Yep. I said, I said, mom, you know, what should I do? And she was like, you know, if you're going to do it, fucking do it. Right? But don't be a bitch about it. Almost verbatim. Um, give it <laughs> That's your mom. Yep. She says shit like that. She goes, don't be a bitch about oh, it. Oh, no. We, we, we talk like we're bros. And she's like, give it 100 and fucking percent. I don't want to hear you crying about it. If you're going to do it, go fucking do it. All right, cool. So I did it. Got those three lines. I was like, I'm an actor now, mom. We've done it. We're here. We, you know, ah, oh, it's amazing. Look, this this check came through. These checks are coming through. Awesome. And then the show got canceled. They expanded my role. 
They expanded it episode upon episode, and then the, it got canceled. I forgot his name, though. And for a year and a half, Nothing. crickets. And that law degree was looking real tasty. Real tasty, you know. Um, but then I went to study uh, at Identity School of Acting and, uh, you know, part-time school. And then used some of their practices and really helped me. Then I started booking back to back to back until I got Killed by My Debt, which is a movie I did just before yeah, doing Sabrina. That looks intense. It was one of the most um, creative, fulfilling experiences of my life. Yeah. Uh, to this day. You got a nomination for a BAFTA for that? Yeah, yeah. The 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 project won a BAFTA. I lost mine to Benedict Cumberbatch, but he that did son of a bitch. Doesn't he have enough awards? But he did let me hold his BAFTA at the after party. Not a not a euphemism, but um, <laughs> yeah. he was a good guy and we talked philosophy and it was good to kind of see being on the right but path. But that really put you on the map. It was it was yeah. So so it happened at the same time. Um so my one day off, because I was it was so heavy and I was kind of toying with method at that time and it was the subject matter was so dark that i just wanted to break and so my one day off they said hey there's this audition it's much much lighter and it was for sabrina for ambrose yeah and i remember at the time they were going to do it rated r so there was cursing so it was like you're gonna you know you're going to be part of the church of the motherfucking night and all that kind of and they, they took the cursing down but i was like this is great so i auditioned for it and then Went back to the film. They told me I was a favorite. Then we finished filming. I'm sick as a dog. And then they fly me out, do the screen test, then come back. And then you got it, kid. Uh, you're going to go over to Vancouver in a couple months for 10 months. And then uh, we, we do that. Sabrina kicks off. Does crazy numbers Was that the one with... Um... Kiernan Shipka. Yeah. Who yeah. else was in that? Uh, Kiernan Shipka, Jazz Sinclair, who I'm with now on Gen V. Uh, Gavin Leatherwood. Ross was Ross on Lynch. that. Ross, Ross Lynch. Yes. I know yes. Ross. Yeah. But I, Your buddy's Ross? I play hockey with Ross. Oh, you play hockey? Uh, yeah. I, I love, love Ross. Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, um, you know. We, He's a good dude. He is. He's a very good dude. Talented. He, He's always busy, but, you know, every now and then I try, we try and hang out. Yeah. But uh, So that show became really popular. Yeah. That thing. And at the same time that that came out, Kill by My Deck came out and had the nominations too. So it was like, just went, both sides of the pond just exploded. And what'd your mom say to you? Um, Get up, keep doing it. Essentially. essentially. Essentially, yeah. She doesn't say, Chance, I really love you. I'm so proud of you. She does, she does. But when she does say it, it has so much more weight because, you know, I'm exhausted lying on the floor and she's like, now I'm proud of you, you know? Yeah. You know? Why, why did, um, would you do something like Sabrina again if they said, we want to come back and we want to do something else with Sabrina? I would like to explore Ambrose's story because his backstory is really good. So, you know, because his, his backstory was that he tried to blow up the Vatican, you know, a few decades Jeez. prior to Sabrina. And that's why he was on house arrest. So I think maybe seeing the aftermath of, of, of that, maybe in present day, or why he did that, um, going back in time, I think it works, or... So you're saying yes. You I would. would. Yeah, yeah. I've is. thought about it. Or Sabrina being in uh, now now that she's officially like dead in the in the canon, I would uh yeah, go back and try and save my cousin. You know, that, that there's there's some stuff there for sure. Yeah. But Gen V, was that that I, I bet you auditioned more than once for that. Uh no, I did a, I did an audition over Zoom. Audition over Zoom. Because, you know, everything after after COVID just... So the, there are the uh, producers and the director, and you're like, all right, great. And you did somebody read with you? Uh, I think so. Oh, I had my friend, my friend Devante. Shout out Devante. He did it first. I haven't seen him in a minute. Got to call him. He did the audition with me over Zoom. And then I got the call back. And then that was just the producers in the room. They had their own reader. And then after that, they said, great, can you come out to Toronto in like three weeks? Or well, three or four weeks. Like, All right, cool. Because it's yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Did you know the 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 weight of all this stuff? Did it occur to you that you're doing a spinoff of one of the biggest shows out there, The Boys? I don't think about it. Did I you think, think about it? Mm, I like when your agents called you. They're like, "There's a spinoff called you." You're like, "Yes." I'm very. I'm. I, I like the content. I'm. I'm very happy with the way the process goes. But you know, I I I tend not to think of things until they've either happened. Or they've in the or the long in the rearview mirror. Then I process things. I think that's the way I kind of process, you know, stress and whatnot. Because I think, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to cut my teeth on kind of these 
you know, bigger franchises. And so what? There's no time to think about your emotions on the day, right? It's like, okay, we've got half an hour of daylight left. You know, every minute that we're not working or if you're sick or you're not in today is what? Between between every one to five minutes is a hundred thousand dollars down the yeah. drain. Get your ass to fucking work. So I don't think about it. Now I just don't. Um, so I think by the time that rolled around, I was like, great. I'll be happy once I'm in Toronto. I'll think about it for a bit, then it's back to work. Did you watch the boys? I did. I was a massive fan. You were? Yeah. Oh, Before actually, you got the role. Yeah, actually, um, touching on Sabrina real quick. Yeah. I originally, originally auditioned for um, for Jughead Jones on Riverdale. And I mm. didn't get that, but I was close. It was one of my first auditions. Um, I think it was between like, me and like three other people, or three or five. And then Roberto, the showrunner, who was showrunner of that, and Sabrina, remembered my audition and actually wrote Ambrose with me in mind. I had no idea. Um and so that, 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 it just, I just remembered that. But then in a similar way, I had auditioned for, for, um, for Huey on The Boys. And I don't think I got close, but I remember reading it being like, I absolutely love everything about this. And what Seth Rogen producing is gonna be a fucking awesome comedy. You know, they're gonna push a ball to the wall. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch this when it comes out. And I did, and I was a massive fan. So I did let myself have that moment of like, wow, once we got it for sure. Right. That's got to be a pretty good feeling when they're like, come out to Toronto when you're going to film this new series. And you're working with, we, I had Clancy Brown on the show. I've worked with him. Yeah. Yeah. He's phenomenal. He's a great guy. Um, he did the Krusty Krab for us voice, the uh, Krusty Krab voice for us once. He did? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I say money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you do any impressions, by the way? Do you do any impressions? Anthony Hopkins always said every actor should be able to do an impression. I think I always do them, but I don't. Rap, you know, rattle off the top of my head. I don't know what to do, but I quite like accents. I can, I can do accents. Can you do any? Can you do Australian? That's the one I struggle with. Yeah, no, that's, Cleo, Aussie. I don't, I don't know. I can't do a really good English accent unless I jump into I quite my like Gary Irish, Oldman. I, I, quite, do, I quite like Irish. I think, I think talking like this a bit, but that's a bit shit. Th that's not bad. <laughs> um, Ryan, can you do it? Which one? Uh, Irish. Oh, Throw after me lucky charms. Oh. <laughs> after me lucky charms. I don't know if it's any good, but the word I like to say, cards on the table. Cards on the table. <laughs> the, the girl from school put all the cards on the table. That's really that's, good. That's, that's good. That's really yeah. good. But that's all you can say. I, I like, it, it's, you need, you need those words though. You need like. Right. You need to know what the rules yeah. are. Yeah. Say your sheep stayed in hood and bastard. I can't do that one. That was Scottish. Well, Scottish is more from the back right. of your throat. Scottish is right there. Scottish. Yeah. It's and, quite, quite here. Yeah. yeah quite right. here. And if like Don, my friend Dom Dominic listened to this Monahan, he'd say it's fucking shite. You're, <laughs> you're ruining it anyway. So we'll stop that. But um, I did one just recently with a, with an accent. We just finished one with. It was so fun uh, to dabble in comedy. Sean William Scott, Rob Riggle, myself, Johnny Simmons. We just finished up in Alabama, and my character was DJ, and it was like, um, uh, my name's DJ. Hey, I'm so ready. Fill me in. Let's go. That was my accent the whole time, and I fucking loved it. You channeled back from when you were living in the I States a little bit. Back. I channeled back, yeah. How was that? Was it, is it out? No, so they're taking it to market right now. The, it's an EFM, and uh, you know we'll see what, what the Bytes says. I think it's an edit right now. Um, I'm ho hopping off to New York for a bit in a week's time, and uh, you know if Mike Dilliberti, the director's up there sh you know, uh, editing, he said, yeah, come on through. So we'll, we'll see. I get to see some of the some of the you know dailies and whatnot in, in the assembly so in gen v you you're, you're kind of a good guy and you're at this school at least for now we don't know what's gonna happen but there's some guy murdering people like a serial killer or whatever right right there's some shady shit with vault the company they're going down and underneath their school they're experimenting on on on, on folks right the season's out we can say that yeah. they're experimenting for on folks yeah we're just don't listen to this part if you haven't seen it right uh, just spoiler, a little, disclaimer yeah um and so he manages to escape. Um, and at the same time, Golden Boy, played by Patrick Schwarzenegger, who's, you know, buddies with my character, you know, he uh, is having these hallucinations and he's getting, he's, he's, he's acting erratically and we'll say, what's going on? He remembers that his brother exists and they were keeping him in the laboratories down underground and that he'd get his memory erased. And so then he tries to kill Clancy Brown's character. Yes, he does, which sets off the whole chain of events. Um, and then, you know, the, my character has a choice. Do I want to, you know, keep going down this road and discover and unravel the mystery as to what's going on, why my best friend killed himself? 
and find his brother or do I go, let's just shut the fuck up, do my meetings, be the next golden boy, be the next guy going up to the seven. And I think episode one or two, he decides I'm going to, I have to keep investigating yeah. you know, to the ire of his parents and whatnot. So he, you know, he's the reluctant hero. He's the stoner, reluctant hero who I think, I think more has more of a conventional arc. Yeah. Right. Going from, you know, like, you know, yeah, Plato's reluctant quote unquote leader, right? Right. It's thrust upon him. So he decides to clean himself up to 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 pursue his morales, pursue his his goals. What are the creators? Do the creators keep things close to the vest or do they uh sort of like let you know that next season you're gonna be doing this? I have no idea what's happening next season. I think no, they they don't tell you anything. No, so they they, they told me going in what the arc would be for the, the first season. I think we're getting we should I should today get the, I think one or two scripts in my inbox. Right. And then I'm I've got a meet that's being set with my showrunner while I'm in town. And so we'll just go through all the stuff and she'll tell me everything and you know. But they're they're they're, they're quite they're quite great with like their open door policy and you know, if you have ideas with your characters and whatnot, you know, they're they're open to it all. Um, really, if you come up with a cool concept and like I think yeah. they'll listen to you. Yeah. So season one. Um, Lizzie and I, we played a little cricket. We'd riff all the time, right? And I, we just love coming up with one-liners. And they use it? And they tone some of her the one-liners down, but they go for it, right? Um, and I think her character's very much able to do that. So we would just like riff and be like, oh, what about this, what about this? And she would just see what stuck. And then, but the, the, the big old penis idea, that wasn't in the script, that was her. That was all her. Really? Uh, as far as I'm aware, that was all her. And so she pitched it, they loved it. And then it became one of these great bombastic moments of that universe, right? So, so you know, they're, they're, if they like it's it, they'll, they'll run with it I like for sure. That. Usually creators are, this is my way or the highway. No, I don't want to, I, I love collaboration. I mm. love when I, I direct, if somebody has an idea, I don't care who it is. I'm like, yeah, that's great. Let's do it. Let's yeah, shoot, yeah. We have time, let's shoot that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that's why I love the one I just did, Batman, because it was like, here's a script. I'll get it one in the can the way it's supposed to be. Now just fucking have at it, guys. That's and, that's when you have fun on set. Oh yeah, and I would do comedy again. I, you know, to have someone like Sean William Scott or Rob Riggle be like, "Dude, that was fucking funny. You made me break like X amount of times. It's, you just don't stop." I was like, "Wow, okay." So, you know, maybe maybe hoping they 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 my character gets a bit more comedy on Gen V. We'll see. Inside of you is brought to you by Rocket Money. I love Rocket Money. You know why? Because everyone should have Rocket Money because it just helps you save money. How many times do we have subscriptions that we don't even know we have anymore and we're paying so much money? It's just throwing away money, Ryan. I, I found one. You And you did it. You told <laughs> I me I got Rocket Money. <laughs> like I, I found one. It. I'm embarrassed to say how long it's been going on, but thank you for finding it. <laughs> My God. It was embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, because it's like you want to watch some show and you go, I have to subscribe to this uh, this streaming dev uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you you start streaming the show, you watch it, you leave, and you forget after this trial period it kicks in and it's they're charging terrible. you 10 bucks a month. It's, it is embarrassing. Ugh. You know, 75% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about. Before I started using Rocket Money, I thought I had – you know, like, oh, I have like five subscriptions. I could not believe it when they showed me I was paying for like four extra uh, between, you know, streaming advices and fitness apps, delivery services. It's never ending. And thanks to Rocket Money, I'm no longer wasting money on the ones I forgot about. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lowering your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with the customer service for you. I like that. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash inside. That's rocketmoney.com slash inside. Rocketmoney.com slash inside. Inside of You is brought to you by Factor. Factor Meals has changed my life. I am not spending tons of money 
ordering delivery service all the time anymore. Um, I get delicious meals that are customized to my liking. I can make them in just two minutes. I have a menu of over 35 options delivered to my door. Calorie smart, keto, protein plus, vegan, veggie. You choose. Discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feeling good all day long. And these meals are delicious. I've had their chicken. I've had their chili. I have had their burgers. This is delicious. You're going to save money and no more stress going to the grocery store, Ryan. You don't want to go to the grocery store all the time when you can have your meals delivered right there for you. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factors ready-to-eat meals so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. Looking for gourmet meals? Try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. No fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. You simply heat and savor the good stuff. Tailored to your schedule, customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Head to factormeals.com slash inside 50 and use code inside 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code inside 50 at factormeals.com slash inside 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Do you get nervous? Do you get nervous before a take? Do you get nervous when you're auditioning? Are you just, or are you just one of those guys who just gets in the zone and you're confident and you forget about everything? Again, kind of after the, after the fact, right? Once it happens and I'll get nervous. You get nervous after what? Yeah, w- once I've done whatever it is and I get to think about it or, you know, uh, mull it over. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Right, right. But uh, while it's happening, I, I don't tend to, I tend to compartmentalize very well. So yeah. you could memorize quickly? Yeah. So I, my process, if we have a process, is uh, because TV land is always changing, I tend to just have a loose idea of what the words are, what the script is, and then come in and then by the time it's action, just it's there for somehow. The lines um, are there? Yeah. Or, or do, do you sort of like improvise? or you do, do- If they let me improvise, I'll improvise. So what I tried, what kind of did in Gen V is because, you know, I have, uh, I like to make my dialogue just kind of flowy and very kind of colloquial the way it kind of comes out. I'll ask them beforehand because obviously the studio process, so I've learned to be like, hey, beforehand, can I change this to this? Can I make it this? Can I make it that? So that we have, you know, I have this kind of structure of how it's going to flow out my mouth. Great. If they're happy with it, fantastic. Um, and that's my way around it. So it just kind of syncs that already, it's already catered to whatever my character or my personal speaking pattern is. Right. Um, but if I have to like hardcore memorize something and I can Sabrina, I struggle with it. No, this is the exposition. This is how it has to be. And this is how it's going to be. It can be many, many takes. I'm not getting it until this. And I learn until they kind of go, fuck it. We're wasting time. Say it the way you want it to say it. And then they go, okay, no, that was actually good. And then. And that's it. Next shot. Yeah. Do you ever get intimidated by other actors? Like with more experience or someone you like, oh my God, it's so-and-so. Do, does that ever get in your way? Or uh, if it does, you kind it subsides quickly? No, because I really, really love the craft. And so if anything, I get excited. I'm like, okay, we're about to, we're about to, you know, be in the, in the flow state together. We're about to riff with each other. I hope you do something different. I hope you hope I do something different and the scene goes somewhere else. Um, so... No, and I also some some other actors would be intimidated by you, by the fact that you want to go in different directions in this when they want to stay stick to the script, stick to the. I, I I've had I've had some frustration in the past, you know, um, from you know some people that I you know that I looked up to, I still look up to them, but like, and then by like maybe the third scene or like maybe the next day or whatever, they're like, you know what, yeah, I like playing with you. It was cool, you know what I mean. But but I think if you have your certain way and your process and whatnot. I think it takes a little bit of time to kind of figure out how do our processes mingle. Yeah, it could be a little jarring to but, some people. But once it does, I, I absolutely love it. I think, I think I learn more if you, if you approach that way. Yeah. If I'm intimidated or if I'm thinking about it too much or whatnot, I think it hinders the process and I can't be in the flow state. 
And yeah. Like, like what what else am I there for? I, I I love the creative. That's that's I think for me it's usually like uh the nerves get out and like if we're running it. You know, if we run it, you know, blah 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 blah. And then I once <laughs> I know I don't love running it either, but sometimes, you know, you have to do what the you know, if the director wants it or the other actor wants it. A lot of times I was like, let's just shoot it. Right. You know, but sometimes I would be there and I'd be like, oh, this um, yeah, this this, this guy's a little intense. You're in your head. You would never let anybody know about it. And then all of a sudden, you hit your hit your stride, mm. and then it goes away. And then the confidence comes in. There's Hopefully. a there's a moment you just kind of feel the transition, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like said, that transition, like I'm kind of like, what am I? No, do your fucking shit, you know. And that can right, be right. exciting when you hit that moment. All of a sudden, it's like like a light bulb goes on. Like you, uh, your personality starts to come through. Yeah. And that's what you want. Um, if someone were to offer you a role, and what would be the role you want would want to play, other than Andre or any roles you played, what would be the one role you love to tackle, like the the perfect role for you? We are, well, the team and and myself, we're 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 gearing up and we're, we're pushing in the direction of large large uh, action, right? So. The, the the career has seemed to have gone, you know, stretched, you know, kind of towed the line between, I guess, we'll call it big budget acting and character acting, right? And I like to throw in quirks and lots of differences to each character, whether they're overt or subtle to each character, right? So, but then you still have to play within what the audience expects in, in like a franchise. So I think we're pushing for large action and I'm doing all the training and stuff that allows the insurance to, to, to do that. And, uh, and then, you know, so you want to be a Stallone, you want to be a Denzel, you want to be a action star. Sure. You know, Denzel definitely has uh, he, he's, he's, he's done both. He shot on the line. Sure. You know? And I'd say, uh, you know, Tom Cruise is one of my biggest inspirations ever. Um, I, I, I recently did an, a, stupid stunt to kind of uh to 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 emulate tom cruise and uh <laughs> i'll tell you about that in a sec but um but i i think more in the independent sphere play with that and then push in the franchise section push for action 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 that's where we're headed right now but the tom cruise story yeah okay so i was at, i was at the mission impossible 7 premiere right in london and i didn't even see part two a part two isn't out Part two is now. What, the no, Dead no, Reckoning I'm talking about the, going back. Oh, the second one. Years. I, I, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm not a huge action guy. I love it. I like I horror movies it. and con- like some docs and I mean, if it's uh, as long as long as it could be grounded somehow. Sure, sure. If it's just kind of like all, oh, it's like you know, it's just like yeah, he's it. it I don't know. It's not me, but yeah. it's most of the world. I'm one of the few that you know. Aren't, but it's you know. Is there a grounded action that you do love? I mean, I love like Star Wars. Is that really action? Super grounded. <laughs> well, that's grounded in its own universe, and and the emotionality but, is universal, right? So it's real characters playing, re- but and I guess maybe I contradict myself a little bit. But like, I'm talking like I'm not a big fan of like, you know, balls to the wall. Dun, you know, dun, dun, what's the, what's the cars? Fast and Furious stuff. Sure. Just sure. like, oh my God, part 10? Yeah. No, I I, I see that. At that point, it but just becomes the machine. It's right? a machine. And fine. People love it. Good for you. I'm just not going to see a movie with you. Right, right, right. You know? Right. I'm going to go, you know? Like, Unless De Niro's in Fast and Furious 11. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But there's a lot of good action, like Heat. Remember Heat? Yes. He was a yes. good movie. Michael yes. Mann. Yes. That was, uh, you know, stuff like that. So they just uh, that happens to have action in it, but it isn't centered on the action. Right, right, right. The inciting incidents and whatnot. You know, I've never seen a John Wick. Never seen John Wick? No. Love him. Absolutely love all him. of them. I've seen all four of them. Yeah, I've seen all four of them. But I don't. I won't watch the spin-offs. Just I haven't seen most Marvel movies. Okay. And probably a lot of DC movies. Me most. and my me and my brother bonded over the you know the culminating in the uh, you know the. Uh, Avengers Endgame, we would watch all those movies. So you together. love that stuff, but also oh, yeah. that is like. Remember, I'm a lot older than you, so what I liked when I was younger is the same stuff that you like now. Sure, sure. You know what I'm sure. saying? So I've gotten older, and my tastes have gone a little bit like you know, 
more like new American wave of kind of like, you know. Yeah, like I like a good. Good fellas. World War and, II okay. thriller. Okay. I like a good, uh, you know, I watched Zone of Interest. Really sad I kind seen of that. movie. It was, that was intense. But like, uh, I like, you know, but, but anyway, go ahead. So action is kind of where yeah. you're, you're headed. You want to do that. But obviously you could do both. You could do whatever you want, really. I'd love to keep straddling the line, right? If that's where the career's been going naturally, just keep doing it, but do it on 10, um, you know, and just do the work to get to that point. And, and the stunt with Tom Cruise. Okay. So I was at, you know, I was, I was talking to my um, publicists and they're, they're lovely. And I was like, hey, uh, I'd love to go, you know, during this time, I'd love to go to some premieres and whatnot, because I just want to see, learn, be in the environment and whatnot. And uh, so, oh, and I actually did Oppenheimer the day of the strike started. Like it was the last premiere. That was cool. But so we did Mission Impossible and uh, I watched it. It was incredible. And then I see Tom, he's like sitting like five, six rows ahead. He stands up. Everyone gives us a standing ovation. That guy doesn't leave for, I guess, two and a half hours until he's shaken everyone's hand, talk to everyone in a meaningful Unbelievable, sense. Unbelievable, isn't it? He's aware. He's intense, but in, in, a, in the perfect way. He's got it down to a, to a T. I met him too. And I met him for two minutes with his former girlfriend or wife. Mm -hmm. And I was like, he's like, hey, oh yeah, how you do? And he's like, what's your name? And I said, like, Michael Rosema. And so it was that. And then a year later, I was at someone's house, like uh, they had this like bar barbecue. And he goes, hey, Tom, this is Michael Rosema. And Tom's there and goes, no, he goes, hey, hey, Tom. And he goes, hey, I met you at uh, yep. Adam Sandler's party like a year ago. And I go, oh my God, he, Tom Cruise remembers me? That's who he is. He's aware of everything. He is the business, right? He and, is. And... and so I was like, wow, this is why I'm at these premieres. So I can watch and see how the, how the big dogs do it, right? And what they're doing. I was at Indiana Jones and I saw Harrison Ford and his way, was, his way was very, very different. And I'm pretty sure he'd been on the ganja. He comes in, he's wow, like, yeah. Years old. yeah. So it's, it's interesting to see all that. That was perfect. Was it? Yeah. I never, I mean, I've been trying to do it. <laughs> yeah. <and> I, you <laughs> so we Little go. kid. We, <laughs> no, that was, it was good. Do you like you, you don't like Blade Runner, do you? Do you like Blade Runner? Yeah, it's a little slow for me. People sure, sure. love that, but it's a little slow for yeah. me. But I love Raiders of the Lost Ark. I love Temple of yes. Doom. I yes. love uh Han Solo, all that. But go ahead. And so, you know, there's the after party who, you know, and, and it's only for cast and crew, but we're dressed in a suit and we're waiting. But I I didn't actually go to meet him because I wanted to just observe. And I was just in awe of observing. Um and I see where all the suits are, so like, let's go. So we walk up to the whatever the adjacent hotel is, you know, down the block, whatever. And they let us right in, and we go and we and I observe it again for another three hours. He's just on, 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 shaking everyone's hand, talking to everyone. He does clock me a few times, which probably means I know everyone here. Why are you here? Or you know, I don't know. But he we looked quick, quick nod, and I, you know, had a cigar, and I went off. But um, that inspired me. So I was like yes what has he done and how is he doing it and that's incredible and i'm like okay team what do we do how do we is there anything we can do and he said okay what do you have in mind chance and i said you know this video you know tom cruise right and at the time he had released this youtube video of him filming mission impossible 8 standing on top of a plane yeah and he's like hey everyone thank you for making top gun blah 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 we'll see you at the movies and the plane phew, veers off i said let's do that i said let's do that Inside of You is brought to you by Shopify. If you haven't used Shopify and you're starting your own business, I don't know who you are. I don't even want to talk to you because Shopify is so easy to use. It is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million order stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. And it's so easy to manage and uh, navigate. For instance, on Talkville and inside of you, I, I do it all. I see what the best product selling is. I see what's the least product selling is. I can easily check um, how much money I've made for the month. Uh, it's easy to add a product. It's all so simple. I can do it. It's right there for you. It's just so easy to use. 
Um, whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash inside, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash inside now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash inside. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. And so... uh I called around. We 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 got the backing of this company um, to help out with the logistics and the and the filming of it all. And so I call up the one place in the United States where you can do this thing called wing walking. And I said, "Hey, uh, here's here's the, here's the concept." And here, you know, I'm sending over the email. Are you guys down? They're like, yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure they couldn't say anything. But if Tom Cruise was going to learn how to do it, he would have gone there. So I was like, that's the perfect place. Wow. So we take off. I go to just outside of Seattle, Washington. Jeez. And uh, I get a call as we're landing on my connecting flight. And he's uh, it's like, hey, so our secondary pilot dropped out. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know so that, you know, you don't get on the plane. No, no, we're on the plane. Uh, so let's figure it out. Uh, okay, okay. So we land, me and Benji, the videographer. And Benji's awesome. Benji... Benji, he has some stories. He's 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 a cool and rugged. And he was shooting guy. us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's 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 no stranger to danger. He's like, nah, I say nothing. So we get there. There's a secondary pilot on this private airfield. We shake his hand. Great. We start training, and then uh, the secondary pilot takes off again. So your replacement of the secondary pilot took off. Is he coming back? Nah, he's not doing it. I'm like, okay. Let's hop on your roller deck. Should we figure it out? Yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. So we get and we start training. How to strap in and do all that stuff. But, uh, but we dangerous. only have, yeah. And, and so you need, you need two pilots. So we needed two pilots because we had GoPros on the first plane, but the second one, we need to get the, the behind angle, like the Tom Cruise show. And this isn't so cheap. It was cheaper than I thought it would be. 10 grand. Less. We, we did a janky. We all did right, a all right, janky. All right. And so you so, set all these cameras up. Yeah. And uh, and then Benji's like, hey, we need to remove the door on the secondary plane so I can get a good angle. I was like, is that possible? He's like, sure. So he's removing the door to the secondary plane. He's calling up his roller decks. No one wants to do it. And so um, we do end up finding the secondary pilot. And uh, he says, the first pilot says, I have some safety concerns, so I can't really give you the full Tom Cruise. I can't give you the that. I'm like, okay, just give me what you can. We'll make it work. And uh, we're training and uh, there's the harnesses on top of the plane. You're supposed to climb up and harness yourself in. And I said, well, that wasn't what the pitch was. The pitch was I stand on the cockpit like Tom Cruise did. Okay, we're figuring that out. So we figure it out and I end up having the reserve harness on me. Um, and the reserve harness has to be long enough for you to be able to climb up to the top. They couldn't, you know, tighten it more. So if I fall down... It's great. I'm not falling off the plane, but I might fall on the pilot. And then we do go down. So we need a second reserve harness. What do we use? A ratchet clamp. Kind of like the same ones you use in Ikea to kind of like yep. put a mattress on top of your mm -hmm. car. So I had the ratchet clamp, one of those. And the the cockpit is like, because it's like a crop duster. The cro cockpit is like the edge of it are like this. And I have my feet on either side, like teetering. And then we're training. We're, we're doing it hours and hours and hours. And he said, and they say, uh, okay, the wind's going to hit you at 160 miles an hour is what, is what it is. And we're going to be between two and 5,000 feet in the air. And, uh, and I was like, you want to keep your leather jacket on? I was like, yeah, because it's like the video that Tom did. <laughs> Sweet. So we get in. The training's all good. We're about to hit it. We take off. And uh, I'm like, great, here it is. Right? We wait, wait for the planes to get into position. And I stand up, and as I stand up out of the cockpit, I go, oh, shit. Okay, it's 160 miles an hour wind. I hold on, I pull myself up, my feet are on the edge, teetering like this, and then my jacket goes over my head, my leather jacket, and my leather jacket's hitting me at 160 miles, right, over and over again. But it's funny. 
it was funny and i there was no time to be scared i was like fuck and so we had to uh, to get into position to do the video i have to turn around but to turn around i have to let go of one of the three points of contact that you have to have on all times on the plane that's my arm holding on so i have to three two one and grab anything i fucking can as i turn around right the jack is still over my face uh, to make matters worse, I kicked, I think, one of like the, the the controls of the plane, like the master controls, as I got up. So he couldn't communicate with the other yeah. pilot. No, no, no he, he was good. He was, he was a great pilot. He figured it out, but it means he couldn't communicate with the other plane. So whilst he was trying to figure that out and get into position, uh, I'm waving around and he thinks that's the signal to do the maneuver. It wasn't. My shit was over my head. And uh, he does the maneuver. And did he teeter it? Or did he give me the full Tom Cruise? He damn near went... If it wasn't upside down, it was three quarters of the way there. My feet came off the cockpit, just enough like zero Gs, hit it again, rectified. I sit my ass down in that cockpit, snug as a rug, and I go, holy fuck. And so then I do up my jacket and we have two more passes, right? Now, now he's figured out the, the cockpit situation. He's got the controls down. Okay, great. We go up, we do it two more times. We get, we get the pass. Great. Um, and then we land. We check the audio, and obviously the audio of whatever we we're going to say is right, right, right. So ADR, and uh, Benji says he says, "Hey, that was crazy, dude. How do you feel?" I said, oh, "I feel all right. I feel <laughs> right." And then he says, uh, "That was crazy." I said, "Thank you, Benji. No, dude, that was fucking crazy." Post it. So, so I'm gonna we're gonna use it at some point for something, right? Uh, we just need to jerry rig it and figure out what we need to use it for, and so maybe like a, I don't know. We'll we'll see. But then, wow. uh, and if it goes well, the plan is to just keep doing Tom Cruise stunts. Jesus, um, you're insane. Thank you. And so my mom would then say, I'm proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm proud of you. Um, he was like, that's fucking insane. And then we landed and we got it all in the can. And he says, no chance. I have been held at gunpoint by insert people here, undercover filming. I've done this. I've done that. He has some crazy stories. This is fucking crazy. And I went, Oh, okay then. You got balls, dude. <laughs> All right, this is called Shit Talking with Chance Perdomo. This is my top tier patrons. It's, it's rapid fire. Let's hit it. So you just you answer something quickly. Top tier patrons. Thank you for supporting me. I'm looking in the camera. Patreon.com slash inside of you. I love you. Thank you for your support. Jen T, what was the best piece of advice you've ever received before beginning your acting career? Be careful whose advice you take. Mm. Best advice I ever got, Denzel Washington. Never go to anyone else's premiere. Only go to your own. Okay. I've done. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I mean, he did say it to me. And then one time I bumped into him again after he said that. And I go, hey, guess what? He goes, what? He goes, you give me advice. He goes, what would I tell you? I said, you said never go to anybody else's premiere. Only go to your own. He goes, all right. I did say that. And I go, but tonight I'm going to my premiere. He goes, all right. And then he goes, I'm not. <laughs> and then he walked off. Tasha asks, what is something that scares you when and when do you feel the safest? I feel the safest between action and cut. When am I most scared? When I allow my thoughts to get the best of me. Amber asks, good answer. What was your experience working with Jensen Ackles? He's a fucking G. That I love him. Awesome. Love Jensen. He's, he's suave. He's cool. He's kind and compassionate. Kind and compassionate. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a good dude. Little Lisa, you have any weird habits? Yeah, I have. I've always had these kind of like mild tics, almost like Tourette'sy. Uh, and they're stress induced, so I, I'd be I'd be shit at a poker table. You, I have ticks. We all do have ticks. Everybody has something. Not you, Ryan bastard. Leanne, <laughs> if you could only describe yourself in one word, what would it be and why? Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Okay, crazy's think, good though. I crazy think, can be good. I think crazy's crazy. good if you know if you're aware of it. Bottle of coins. Bottle of coins. Jessica B, what's your dream role? You already said that, but yeah. but let's let's say let's say let's say. Rocky, let's do Rocky. Ooh, if we can go back man. in time and do Rocky. Go back into, there's nothing wrong with that. It's one of my favorite movies. Look, what are you doing for the next 50 years of your life? I, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind marrying me too much. That's freaking good. <laughs> hey, Paulie. Yo, Paulie. Yo, Father Carmine. I was wondering if you could <laughs> say a few words, you know, before I get my face beat in. It's about how much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning <laughs> is done. <laughs> yes. Um, Gen V is that on, is it uh, Paramount, Amazon? Amazon. 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 Sony and Amazon out on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. They could watch the first season now. Yes. We're going back to shoot the next one 
in a month or two. People love the show, man. They're excited about it. And when you do a spinoff, sometimes that doesn't happen, but it, right. it caught right away. Right. It did some good numbers. Some People are into it. For sure. Um, I'm happy for you. Thank you. And I also wanted to say, Smallville was the shit. You watched it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Get I, out. Yeah, so I had a cousin and he would watch it and that's how I got into it. I don't know if I finished it, right? Because it was that's like right. 10 no, seasons or something, I, I right? Didn't. But uh, at that point, I think I got an Xbox and uh, my attention as a child moved on. Right? Yes. But, but good shit. Thanks, man. It was, it was a fun time. Thank you for that part of my thank childhood. You. Hey, and thank you for all that you do. And uh, you're an inspiration. Keep oh, doing God, it. Thank you. Listen to your mom. She knows what she's doing. Uh, keep busy, but also stay in therapy. For sure. Keep learning about yourself and what for makes sure. you do certain things. That's what it's all about. I try to tell my dad that, but uh, anyway. And don't go to anyone else's premieres. And don't go to anyone else's except Tom Cruise's premieres. Except Tom you Cruise. you want to see how action stars work and how they respond to other people so then you can incorporate certain qualities in your life yes sir look kid <laughs> all right thanks man chance thank for domo look out for this guy i love it thanks man thank you it's hard it's hard listening to what uh he was so much fun here it was, yeah it was like, and i, I didn't so know him of... i didn't know him before he came on his publicists were telling me you know you're gonna love this guy and you know he's got so much going on gen v and all these things and and within five minutes of him being here, I was just like, I love this guy. He just felt, it was so comfortable to be around him. He made you feel so comfortable. And um, anyway, thanks for listening. And uh, look, uh, you know, tell people you love them. You hear it all the time. Uh, Chance went, you know, he's, he's gone too soon. And um you just never know when something tragic like this will happen, when it will happen, if it will happen. So you just have to be present and live in the moment. And that's what we did here on the podcast. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you for listening. And um, we're going to give a shout out to my top tier patrons. Go to patreon.com slash inside of you. Or I'm sorry, uh, I can't even talk today patreon.com slash inside of you if you want to become a, a member and support the podcast but uh thanks chance um it was nice spending some time with you here we go nancy d leah and Kristen, little lisa yukiko jill e brian h nico p robert b jason w sophie m Raj C, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Mike E, L, Don Supremo, 99 more, Santiago M, Leanne P, Maddie S, Belinda N, Dave Hall, Brad D, Ray H, Tabitha T, Tom N, Talia M, Betsy D, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Mr. Melsky, <laughs> uh, Eugene and Leah, Mel S, uh, Chris, Eric H, Shane R, Andrew M, Oracle, Amanda R, Kevin E, Stephanie K. Jorel, Jammin J, Leanne J, Luna R, Mike F, Stonehenge, Brian L, Jules M, Jessica B, Kyle F, Kaylee J, Charlene A, Brian A, Marilyn Louise L, Romeo the Band, Frank B, Jen T, April R M, Randy S, Oral P, Rachel D, Jen, Carolina Girl, Lorelei L, Melissa H, Nick W, Stephanie and Evan, Charlene A, Don G, Jenny B, John, Jennifer R, Tina E, NG Tracy, Tasha S, Keith B, Waffles, Heather and Greg, L-E-K, Diego M. We couldn't do this podcast without you. Michael Rosenbaum here <laughs> with Ryan Taylor. Ryan, Ryan, here. And uh, I, uh, this, I'll, I'll say this with more conviction. Be good to yourself. We'll see you next week.